I'm Matt Colburn. I'm the Senior Manager of Patterning at uh, IBM's uh, Albany facility in uh, Albany, New York. Um, uh, I manage the patterning team that covers etch, lithography, uh, computational and materials. The direct self assembly is a, a, a very uh, interesting uh, subject. It's, a, it's sort of near and dear to my heart. I've worked on this personally when I was uh, doing engineering work myself. Uh, in the past. IBM has a long history in directed self-assembly and self-assembly uh, in, in general. We have a pretty strong program um, covering the materials, also the computational part uh, that's uh, a prerequisite for installation. Uh, directed self-assembly is basically a, a technology in which uh, you use the natural um, a phase separation of a uh, die block copolymer or really a copolymer system. And the natural periodicity is defined by effectively the molecular weight of the systems and the interactions between those, uh, the two parts of, uh, let's say, a die block copolymer system. And so the, the unique part of directed self-assembly and, and, and really the self-assembly part is the natural periodicity is, is sort of fixed and it's, it's sort of driven by the chemistry rather than um, a de deterministic mask. Um, Directed self-assembly still uses the deterministic patterning of uh, some sort of guiding pattern, which allows you to put down a lattice uh, that allows you to direct the self-assembly and the phase separation at a given frequency. Okay, so it's uh, it can take advantage of you know the forces of nature basically uh, the entropy uh, gives free energy of the systems uh, to give you. Uh, additional frequencies that aren't there in, inside of the guiding pattern. And that's useful uh, in the sense as a com uh, competing technology to uh, self-line quadruple patterning, I guess self-line double patterning, um, and, and some of these uh, more deterministic uh, patterning solutions. And so uh, IBM's been working on this for uh, actually quite a long time, almost two decades. A lot of the fundamental materials in the 90s um, some of the original uh, graph, uh, grapho epitaxy approaches uh, in the early 2000s targeted towards device. I worked on uh, some uh, self-assembly techniques for air gaps uh, personally. And then, you know, we've been working over the last uh, five to ten years on really driving uh, self-assembly into uh, device architecture. So we've published, uh, and, and others have published as, as well, um, activities at Fin level, uh, metal, as well as via. Uh, there's different types of self-assembly that one can take. Uh, you can have uh, lamellar formation, which allows you to, to line space. You can have um, um, cylindrical face, uh, which people oftentimes use. Uh, some people use it for line space, but uh, if it's laid down across the wafer, but uh, most of the cylindrical is, is used to uh, print uh, vias. Constructs. So there's two different types, there's a couple different types of morphologies that one can have uh, that are unique and appropriate for different types of uh, design layers inside of a chip. And so the, one of the reasons why we're interested in uh, DSA is that uh, it can simplify in principle pitching very, very aggressive pitches, which is always uh, useful. And uh, the second is that you can actually rectify or improve the natural variation that one would have in a deterministic pattern. Uh, say you're printing a, uh, a V and there's natural oscillations in the size of that structure. Uh, directed self-assembly in, in that case has been shown to uh, improve the um, uh, variation of the size of the, of the circle that you're trying to print or the via that you're trying to print. So there's some uh, very specific use cases in, in how you're applying directed self-assembly into the technology of, of patterning. Self-assembly, I think, um, has a ways, and I, I can speak in logic. I, I work in the logic space. Uh, I think there's a ways to go to, from uh, where it, need, it is today to uh, installation. I think it's going to be paired uh, in line and space in, in a regime that would be, um, you know, sub 40 pitch, you know, sub 30 pitch, very aggressive um, pitch regime in which it provides process simplification. Uh, in the VIA space, uh, there's a couple different implementations, uh, whether you're trying to print a VIA uh, multi-hole um, uh, generation from a single guiding pattern. So you can take one print and get multiple contacts out of it. So. Uh, 
uh, I can't say when that they'll be implemented into uh, manufacturing, but I think we have a ways to go in terms of both development of the materials, uh, the level of defectivity of those materials, uh, to, to reach parity with um, conventional processing. Uh, state of the art uh, semiconductor lithography is extraordinarily precise and it's extraordinarily defect free. So to get a uh, system uh, to that level, it, it takes some time. Um, you know, there's a lot of good work being published at the conference this year and in previous years on, on driving the defectivity. Um, so we have a ways to go to, to, to insert. Uh, I, would, I would suspect we're uh, at least a, a note or two away from really inserting it. Uh, but I think there's a lot of uh, good progress in the materials um, and there's a lot of good progress in the computational capability. And, and uh, even if the materials are ready, uh, we still need to make sure that we have the computational solution uh, to apply them. So there, there's a couple pieces of the puzzle um, that are actually being discussed at the conference this year um, to make sure that that infrastructure is uh, being ready uh, for an insertion. But I, uh, I can say that it's not going to be uh, this year in, in, in logic, let's say. Yeah. 